This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Four more games lined up tonight across the Sweet 16 in the men's college basketball tournament. A couple of games set up for the Elite Eight as well. We're going to break down those today by talking to Riley Thomas of FanDuel Research, getting his thoughts on Friday night's games and a first look at the couple of games on Saturday. Then later on, I'll dive into NASCAR in Richmond for Sunday, a Sunday night race on Easter Sunday for NASCAR as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Riley Thomas. Check him out on Twitter at underscore Riley8. He is a writer for us at FanDuel Research. Riley, happy Friday to you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. Uh, would have been better if some games had broke a different way for me last night as far as like bracket stuff goes. But fun games outside of the UConn games. So I'm not going to complain too much about that. Yeah, at least your bracket's still alive. Mine's done. It was alive until Arizona decided to go full Arizona. Oof. That was uh, <laughs> like, I, I think I deserve that though. Like that's, that's on me, right? Like that's my own fault for, for trusting a team that can do some, you know, dumb stuff occasionally. Yeah. I got burned by them. I think it was last year and never again. I'm done with them. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, I understand anymore. that. That's me next year. So I'll consult there you, you about like how to cope <laughs> with that next year before I fill out my bracket. So I know in advance what to do with that. But we're going to do today with Riley is break down the four games for tonight. And they look all pretty fun, honestly, on paper. So we'll break down those and then we'll look ahead to tomorrow. Illinois, UConn and Clemson, Alabama and get Riley's first look at those games and see where is his valued FanDuel research. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast we were here every weekday monday through friday breaking down college basketball talking nfl talking nfl draft coming up the kentucky derby just around the corner and of course plenty of other sports as well get that as it is posted by subscribing to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear leave us a five star rating on apple Podcasts or spotify you can also find us on the fanduel youtube page and over on fanduel tv plus now, Riley, let's dig into the first two games of the night. That is NC State taking on Marquette, where Marquette is a six and a half point favorite, and then Gonzaga taking on Purdue. That would be a fun one, too, where Purdue is a five and a half point favorite. Beginning with those two games, Riley, where are you seeing value for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, so I actually really like a line for each of these games. Uh, so starting with NC State against Marquette, um, and really a kind of I guess, boring tournament I was saying earlier. Not as many Cinderella's this time around. If there's a Cinderella, it's NC State. Now, would I label them as that? I don't know, because, you know, it's NC State. It's an ACC team. But uh, if any game is going to get ugly tonight, I think it'd be this one. I really love Marquette to cover the spread, uh, six and a half here. I'm just really worried about NC State's guards for this one. Of course, their front court has been excellent with DJ Burns. That has really become America's sweetheart with just <laughs> some old school ball and just yeah. the way he plays. It's so different. And then Muhammad Diara has been extremely underrated. He's putting up over 13 rebounds a game over the last six games. I mean, that's just ridiculous. But um, their guards just have not been that great for NC State. Uh, DJ Horn led them in scoring in the regular season. He has not been good in the tournament so far. He's been inefficient. He's shooting under 40% uh, his last two games. And then Marquette has a championship level backcourt. Um, Cam Jones and Tyler Kolick have just been so good. Cam Jones has made nine of 23s in the tournament, so shooting over almost 50%. Kolick is averaging over 19 points and 11 assists. So I am just at this point when you get into the later stages, I just feel like guard play is so, so, so important. And I think Marquette can really just run them off the court with their guard play. And then they also have a great front court player in Oso Digodaro, which is probably their best defender. He can, he's a great passer. So, and I feel like DJ Burns is going to be tasked with him and he could get really, really tired on a defensive end because Marquette's big man has the ability to step out and face you up and pass. And I, I could see that wearing out Burns. So I, I'm really on Marquette to cover tonight. Now, you're talking about Kolek, and I know there were concerns about him coming into the tournament, but he has alleviated those concerns by playing almost every minute across the first two games. And I feel like that probably just kind of changes the outlook for Marquette pretty drastically, right? 
Oh, yeah. I think, you know, we heard it a lot during the conference tournament week about how important he was. And yeah. really, I don't think it's too surprising because just various metrics throughout the season, he's been one of the most valuable players all year. But, I mean, he's just been, yeah, yeah. his playmaking especially has been just insane. They, they keep getting guard play like this. Can anyone beat UConn? Probably not. But Marquette is playing like they, they have a chance to win it all if their guards keep playing like this. All right, so Riley likes Marquette, minus 6.5. That is minus 112 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Other game mentioned is Gonzaga versus Purdue. Purdue, a 5.5-point favorite. What are you seeing in this one, Riley? So I have been, I guess, one of the only things when we filled out the bracket that looks kind of smart still is I had Gonzaga lead 8. I can't come off it at this point. So I guess my big risk tonight is going to be Gonzaga money line. Love it. Um, you know, Purdue's obviously been scary. They're winning i think their their margin right now is 33 and a half points through two games but you know gonzaga has been great too they've won their games by an average margin of 21 points uh just anywhere you look these have been two of the better teams in the tournament uh bart torvik their efficiency ratings just for this tournament uh, they have gonzaga as the fifth best team purdue is the sixth best team so you know this is about as good as it gets Something else I really like for this game, too, is the over for Gonzaga's uh, team point total, which is at 74 and a half. Really like that because they've been averaging over 85 points per game. They've been shooting over uh, 55%. They're shooting 50% from three. So this is interesting because I know Purdue has Zach Eady in the paint, but I like Gonzaga's chances around the rim tonight. Um both teams are top 10 in near proximity uh, shooting percentage per Hazel metrics, which is just, you know, layups, dunks, stuff like that. But the difference here is Purdue is in the bottom 10% defensively, an opponent close to percentage, according to Bart Torvik. They're also bottom 20% in the nation in two point shots allowed per game. And Gonzaga also really likes to attack the rim. They have a great uh, front court with Graham EK, Anton Watson. They even have some depth with Ben Gregg and Braden Huff. So I think they have some bodies that could throw at Ed, and Ed is going to get his no matter what. But overall, I, I just think Gonzaga is going to get their looks. And if they if they can limit Purdue's supporting cast around the rim, I really like their chances. Their offense is red hot. So I just I'm not coming off Gonzaga at this point. All right. I love it. The two you mentioned, the Gonzaga point total over 75 and a half. That is minus 104. And the Gonzaga money line plus 188 right now. Any consideration for you for taking the plus five and a half to give yourself more flexibility? Or do you feel strong enough in the conviction that this is Gonzaga's game to go for the higher upside play with the money line? I, I think it's worth taking the plus five and a half, too. Um, I, I do feel very safe in saying this is going to be a close game down to the yeah. wire. Um, just me, you know, being bold and yeah really liking Bra uh, Gonzaga throughout the entire bracket process. I just, I have to take the money line. You know, it's only right. I love it. Okay. So Gonzaga money line plus 20 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Riley liking that one. The nightcap is Duke taking on Houston. Houston, a four and a half point favorite there. We've also got Creighton taking on Tennessee. That one should be a banger. Tennessee, mm. a two and a half point favorite for that one. What across these two games? Shout out to you, Riley. So for these two games, I am a lot different than the other two. I'm really not sure how they're going to pan out. I'm nervous about taking any side for the spreads because I can just I can see it going either way for both yeah. of these games. So I'm looking at player props for these ones. Uh, so for Duke against Houston, uh, of course, Houston's had one of, if not the best defense all season. Um, and for them, they just really like to – pack the paint, guard the rim. They're top five in pretty much any two-point defensive stat you're going to look at. But with that said, there is an opportunity to shoot threes here. So I really like Duke's Jared McCain to make three three-pointers. I know that's pretty bold, but he comes off a game where he just made eight of 11 three-point attempts. He dropped 30 points. I mean, he's a sharp shooter. He takes over 55% of the shots from three. Um Houston's opponents also take over 40% of their shots from three. McCain's made multiple three-point uh, three-pointers in four of his last five games. So I think the opportunity is here for McCain to just really just throw it up from deep and make a, a few shots tonight. That player prop for McCain, uh, three plus made threes at FanDuel Sportsbook for the Duke Houston game, plus one away to get three plus made threes for this one. You mentioned there's a player prop you like for Creighton versus Tennessee as well. What stands out to you there? So I am sticking with the uh, three ball tonight. I also like uh, Baylor Shireman to make four threes. So I'm getting even more bold here. 
but the uh the volume is here i mean this this guy takes um over 59 percent of the shots from three-point land um creighton as a team they take over 48 percent of their shots from three which entering the tournament that was the second highest mark behind byu um so they're facing tennessee of course another great defense they like to make it kind of ugly and physical but it's uh similar to what houston does they want to really pack the paint defend the rim if you want to shoot threes go for it um opponents are taking over 40 percent of their shots from three once again for uh tennessee so Shireman throws up a lot of threes. And I think if Creighton is going to win this game, I think their path is just making the three ball again. I mean, they made 15 three pointers against Oregon in the last game. So we know they're not scared to shoot it, especially Shireman. And um, something that's interesting, we hear how great of a score Dalton Connect is for Tennessee, which he is. I cannot wait to yeah. see Shireman against Connect, but his defense isn't uh, that good. Um, so Tennessee has a lot of great defenders but if there was two defenders to pick on it's going to be connect and uh josiah jordan james in the front court which are both forwards both of them could see shireman so he could actually get some decent matchups too um, they both have the lowest uh defensive beijing performance rating on the team um that is josiah jordan james and don't connect and that's a stat for uh, evan maya great site with some player ratings and stuff like that but um so I, I think he could actually get some good one-on-one -on -one matchups as well and get some good looks from three tonight. I love the boldness, Riley, across the board for tonight. Uh, Lycan is Shireman plus 154 to make four plus threes for the Creighton versus Tennessee game. That should be a delight to watch for sure. And as mentioned, uh, the other one that, uh, other player prop, Jeremy McCain, three plus threes at plus 108. Now we do know the matchups for Saturday's games as well. These markets have not been up super long, so... Probably haven't had a ton of time to dig in, Riley, but I did want to ask you your first look. Uh, Illinois versus UConn, UConn eight and a half point favorite, and then Clemson taking on Alabama, where Bama mm -hmm. is a three and a half point favorite. Anything stand out to you at first glance for these two games, Riley? Yeah, so kind of as I mentioned earlier, Connecticut is just they're they're terrifying right now. Yeah. They can beat you any way. They're they're smashing everybody. Um, they've been so good. So I'm not really looking at anything for that game. Yeah. I'm really kind of worried for Illinois, too, because as soon as Terrence Shannon gets in foul trouble last night and he has to exit the game, their offense really kind of disappeared. And meanwhile, UConn is so balanced and can do everything. So not looking at that game. But for Clemson, Alabama, I love the Clemson money line. Um, I think these are obviously if there was going to be a surprise story at this stage in the tournament, it's these two teams meeting. I don't think too many people had them this far. Um, and I'm really surprised by Alabama as well because they have a top 10 offense before the tournament and they had a top uh, or they were outside the top 100 in defense at Kempom. And typically that's a recipe for disaster. Um, Baylor and Kentucky were two teams that fit those that metric prior to the tournament. Obviously, we saw both of them fail. So at this point, I mentioned guard play earlier. You also have to be able to play defense, and Alabama does not really play defense. Meanwhile, Clemson has been guarding at a really high level. Um, that's a huge reason they were able to take out Arizona is, is their defense. And uh, going back to Evan Maya, um, we've seen a stat where Clemson is really good against teams who push the pace and play fast, um, which Al Arizona was at. Alabama plays just as fast as Arizona. They score a lot. So Clemson has a history this season of really frustrating these teams that want to get out and run and score. Also, uh, Clemson's front court with P.J. Hall and Ian uh, Shefflin, they've been excellent. And for Alabama, their defensive front court isn't very good. We saw some good stops from Grant Nelson in that Sweet 16 game against North Carolina. But overall in the season, he has not had great um, efficiency marks on the defensive end. So um, – I also, by the way, I love that PJ Hall for Clemson is getting his flowers. He's been a great player for the last couple of years, so it's been awesome to see him get those flowers. But uh, I just really like their matchup in the front court for this one. I think they could get a lot of easy looks around the rim. Also, just their ability to slow some of these fast-paced teams down. Um, so I'm, I'm loving Clemson for this game. I, I think they got it. 
Uh, I love that both you and Aiden Cotter, who we had on yesterday's show, become believers in Clemson. He liked them plus seven and a half last night. So, hey, they've converted all of us here at FanDuel Research, and why not run it back one more time? Clemson money line plus 132, where Riley is looking across these Saturday games initially. That is Riley Thomas. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at underscore Riley8. Find his work at FanDuel Research. Riley, have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for the time. As always, enjoy the basketball. We'll talk to you once again soon. Soon. you as well thank you for having me on all righty again thank you to riley and thank you to aiden yesterday too for swinging by talking some men's college basketball we'll get them back here on the show before the end of the year too to talk about hopefully the national tournament the national championship which is not too far around the corner we're going to get into some nascar that i like for richmond on sunday in just one second but first if your bracket is busted like mine now is say goodbye because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed it's time to go dancing on america's number one sports book right now new customers get two hundred dollars and bonus bets if your first five dollar bet wins that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads money lines you can even pick who's gonna win it all just visit fanduel.com and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets must be 21 plus in president select states fanduel is offering online sports wagering in kansas under an agreement with kansas star casino llc first online real money wager only bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt ten dollar first deposit required see terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Verm- North Carolina, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. 4700 visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's take a look now at some NASCAR in Richmond for this weekend. It's a Sunday night race uh, for Easter Sunday for the NASCAR Cup Series. And not seeing a whole lot I like as far as outrights for this weekend at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, most of the guys I thought I'd be on have relatively short odds. So I'm staying away from there personally until post qualifying. We do tend to, see, t- tend to see some value there because qualified, not super predictive of the finishing order Richmond, given how important tire fall off is. I do like a couple of top 10 bets, though, and they're within the same team. Those two bets are Chase Briscoe, top 10 at plus 320, and Ryan Priest at plus 320. A couple of Stuart Haas racing drivers I think are a bit undervalued for this weekend. And Briscoe's a guy I tend to like quite a bit on short, flat tracks, which is what Richmond is. He won Phoenix a couple years ago. He was ninth in the first Phoenix race this year, a couple weeks ago, same tire combination this week as they had there, and he had a 13th place average running position in that race. Now, Richmond is not the best track for Briscoe of this track type, but he's also not bad there. He's had a top 17 average running position in all four races here during the next-gen era. He's finished 12th or better in three of those four races. So my model has Briscoe at 27% to finish inside the top 10. His implied odds at plus 320 are 24%. So I'm very okay taking Briscoe. A bit less value on Priest. I got him at 24.5%. Again, the implied odds are 23.8%. So it's slim. I got pushed over the top, though, because of how good Priest here was here last year. During the spring race, he had an eighth place average running position and he finished fifth or that might've been actually the fall race, but either way I had a really good race here in Richmond. And that was his first career top five finish at a non drafting track ever for him in his career. And he did this with other short flat tracks too, because he could have won Martinsville. Uh, he had a penalty that killed him. He had a 15th place average running position in the other Richmond race as well. And Martinsville is not the same as Richmond, but like, it is helpful to see guys who can run well on the generic track type of short flat. And that's kind of Priest's bread and butter. He was all right in Phoenix earlier this year, 18th place average running position there. But I do think that the increased tire fall off should help him at Richmond compared to what we see in Phoenix. I've been on Priest a good number of times this year and it has not worked out, but given his strong run here last year, I will buy in the model once again. 
I will say though that if you're not as sold on Priest, I gave really strong consideration to Noah Gregson, his teammate at plus 340. I don't show value there by my model, but I'm really, really close. So if you wanted to go Priest instead of Gregson, I think that'd be totally fair. I think Briscoe's kind of the the one I feel is is more obvious between this group. So I'm willing to go Briscoe for sure. But if you can't quite get sold on Priest, I think that Gregson's a good alternative. So the ones I'm going with personally, Briscoe top 10 plus 320 and Priest top 10 plus 320 as well, but would consider Gregson at plus 340. I just think Stuart Haas racing in general, a bit undervalued based on the strength they've shown through the first couple of races so far this year. Again, well, the the NASCAR betting guide up on FanDuel Research uh, this weekend, so we'll update that after practice and qualifying to see if any more value pops up. But for right now, sticking with just those two top 10 bets with Briscoe and Priest. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Riley Thomas for swinging by, breaking down his thoughts on the men's college basketball Sweet 16 for tonight and the first look at the Elite 8 for tomorrow. Tomorrow, follow Riley on Twitter at underscore Riley8. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Uh, Enjoy the basketball. Enjoy the racing. Enjoy the baseball as well. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 